Hi ladies and gentlemen, I have a message for you before we get into the information. It'll only take a moment, and that is, what is our response going to be to pedophilia? And we know that it's rampant, especially in different areas of government and places of authority where they can cover it up. We need participation more than anything else. That's what's really going to count. And so what I have here is Navy SEAL Craig Sawyer's website. It's called Vets for childrescue.org. Also, we have here opdeepstate.com. If you'll visit those two sites and see what you can do to help, you don't need to spend a lot of time. We just need a lot of people to be involved for short times. Just little things that you can do. Please check those out. Thank you. I'm Roy Potter, a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Welcome to the Potter Expositor. Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's April 9th, 2017 and things are progressing. We are getting a lot of military movements everywhere and I want to make sure that you understand that I will never identify a unit, the type it is, other than very general circumstances, or their exact location. If you expect that from me, you won't get it. It's called operation, operational security. Even if our government is doing things that are wrong, the troops aren't responsible for it unless they violate their oath of office and would go against the Constitution or do something unlawful. Uh, and that would be on them, and they need to know what a lawful and an unlawful order is. But you'll never hear me give any more information than very basic. Okay, it just it just isn't right for their own for their safety and for their operational security. Having said that, I think I need to talk about why we're justified in in being upset with Trump. Now, I'm not saying he hasn't done a lot of good things, but this could undo everything that he's done from a number of multiple angles. This could be a trap for him to impeach him, get us in an unjust war get us in a, in a horrible situation, and the TPP could be turned around in a heartbeat or anything else that he's done. We need time to establish this. It's great he got you know, the Supreme Court justice in. Wonderful. But you know, we've got to be careful at this point, and doing something wrong is not a good thing. So I will hold his feet to the fire. Now, he said back during the campaign that there was one thing he would never, ever do to us, for sure. He would never lie to us. He said, I will never lie to you. But President Trump, there are lies of omission and lies of commission. And the fact of the matter is, is that the way the Constitution is written for going to war is about, you know, getting the people to agree with it. Not allowing them to do it is a lie of omission. Those stop points, those hesitation points, those breaks are put on there for a reason to control someone who has power. And the Constitution gave us that and you need to start abiding by it. Now you've had your people there justify what you're doing. There was no clear and present danger in Syria, none whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk about the chemical thing here in a few minutes. This was pure political. To, to shore up your, you know, show how strong you are, that you'll act quickly, whatever. But this was wrong to do it this way and I'll get to that in a minute. I was a nuclear chemical accident incident control officer. I went through the, the school. I was assigned to that position for a time. And I was the Provo Marshal at the world's largest chemical weapon storage depot. All right, Tooele Army Depot. A lot of people probably know something about that. I know what I'm talking about when I talk about chemical agents. Their storage, their, their decomposition, all of those things, their effects. And this is what I'm going to say, okay? Canisters, if you go out and you find a can of food that's empty, but it says beef on it, that doesn't mean that's what's in it. The canister means nothing. At Tooele Army Depot, we had tons of empty containers 
that otherwise would have chemical agent in it, and they weren't there. What am I saying? Those pictures that the IC gave you, or the special forces, or whoever took them, of the canisters of supposed nerve agent doesn't prove a thing. Not a thing. You look at the supposed victims of this entire attack, and the people that are treating them are not adequately protected, number one. Number two, the victims aren't suffering from sarin gas symptoms. I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like they've been asphyxiated, like a little baby having somebody put their hand over their mouth to make them pass out. Strangled or drugged. That's what I see. And I think most medical people, actually all the medical people I've talked to about this have agreed with me. Why didn't you get some other background on this? Because you were in haste. Alex Jones brought out today, and actually I thought about it before he said it, but I'm going to repeat it here because you need to know. You're really going to bomb a chemical storage area and release all that into the atmosphere? Really? Did you really believe there was chemical agent there? Would you really release that into the atmosphere with the type of explosions you were using? Even if you use white phosphorus, it's not going to burn all of it up, endangering the population that way, and then you could be accused of setting off chemical agent. Your advisors haven't taught you very well. They haven't guarded you very well. They want you to fail. They're setting you up for it. Just like I've said. McMaster's in, is a problem. And one of the reasons why so many people are upset with you is because a man is known by the company he keeps or the people he hires and brings in. And you've brought in known neocons, known people part of the CFR, part of Goldman Sachs, and we heard the excuses all, well, they need to run the government, and I've already covered that. Yeah, they're running the government all right, not you. You, you need to rein them in, even if it means getting outside the box of civil service and the UCMJ and some other things. You need, you need to get these people pulled away, out of the way, because it's just going to keep getting worse. To go into Syria without a clear and present danger, evident, and there isn't one, President Trump, you can't, you can't show that to me. It doesn't exist. You needed a, an authorization from Congress so that the brakes would be put on this thing and we could look at it. Clear and present danger, the Constitution covers that. North Korea? Yeah, I'd say that's probably a clear and present danger. And sending a, a, an aircraft carrier group there, which is really what that is, I think they call it a strike group, but unless the... Anyway, that, that's, that's applicable. That, that's reasonable. You know, North Korea is out of control. But if you think that your little fireworks display in Syria really impressed the Chinese, not a bit. Not a bit. You know, most of those they could probably take care of with their own technologies that we gave them from the Clintons, as you probably are aware of. Which brings another point up. Why haven't you acted on the Clintons? You know, one of the first times I got upset with you is when at first you said you were going to prosecute them or have somebody prosecute the Clintons and all of these other people in the government. And then all of a sudden in one interview you said, oh, they're good people, you know, I don't want to bother them. That was a betrayal. Because those people have done so much evil in this country to our own people. The uranium one thing, and I, I tie this back into this whole thing with the BLM and what's happened to ranchers and, and, and farmers and the Amish and all of that. What they're doing using the EPA and, and the, the, the Bureau of Land Management and these people to steal land or to control it. And to take it from them so that people like Clinton could get money from Russia from selling uranium. Or Harry Reid, you know, supposedly, you know, his son with those solar fields in Nevada, you know, or, or whatever. You know, there's tons of this stuff. The Haiti situation, the, the, the servers uh, of Clinton, uh, the, the murders that are surround her, you know, they could find stuff on Vince Foster. You could go after these people in so many ways. And I'm sorry, but, you know, Chelsea Clinton is just too bad. She's done some criminal stuff, too, it looks like to me. I can't accuse her of it, but it looks like to me that she's, she's at least aware of some things. You know, what is that? Accessory after the fact, at the very least. I'm sorry that Ivanka might be upset about her friend getting in trouble and her, parents, uh, her friend's parents. But look at the evil that these people have done. Seth Rich now, we find out. Gee, 
He was probably the leaker, and somebody actually murdered him. Well, I wonder who that would have been, or for whom. President Trump, you have to follow through and go after the Clintons and all of those people. Or else, again, it's you've lied to us. You weren't serious. And I understand all the political implications. But you should at least be moving down those tracks. Maybe you are, but we don't see much evidence of it. You know, we've got these two things that you saw at the beginning of the video. Uh, Craig so Sawyer with uh, Vets for Child Rescue and Op Deep State were trying to get the government to start moving on these pedophile rings, the upper echelons, and also the 650,000 emails and all of that intricate information. And I know investigations take time, and I've talked about this before. But, you know, you need to start updating us a little bit, okay? You, you don't think you should have to, but in fact... Yes, you do, because right now your credibility is on the line. You have to go after these criminals and stop allowing your agencies to harass decent human beings that are just trying to survive. And you, and you talked about that. So what's the hang-up? What's the hold-up? Finally, I hear all these excuses about, well, Trump can't do this because he's got this problem, and Trump can't do that because of this problem, and his people are doing this, and his people are doing that. I'm sorry, Trump, you asked for the job. I didn't pick those people, you did. The people that you have in the White House and all those advisors and all of that. You know, as much respect as I have for Tillerson, and I know he's probably just parroting what you told him to say, plus the masters or whoever, whomever, but at first, all oh, we're not looking for regime change, just like you said in your campaign promises. And now all of a sudden in Syria we are. You know, this, this is instability. It doesn't make any sense. Again, going back to this clear and present danger thing, this is all designed by the neocons, and you just have to put a stop to it. Why? Because you're the guy in charge, right? The commander-in-chief is responsible for all his people do or fail to do. Period. End of story. So I don't want to hear all these other people making excuses for you. And I didn't accept it for Reagan or anybody else either. But I certainly can't expect it from you. Not after all that we went through with this campaign and looking at what's going on. All right, I'm, I'm running out of time here. Let me just show one more thing here on the map because I think it's important. I understand that, that if you were there to fight ISIS instead of bombing the Syrians... You know, that, that would have made a lot more sense. Why won't, why are you afraid of people saying you're a Russian agent anymore? Forget that. Get the Russians involved in going after ISIS. And then what's going to happen? The people are going to say, gee, yeah, see? No, we're not going to back up this harassment of Trump. He's doing his job. The good people will support you that if you just get that liver going and, and, and stop, you know, whacking out on us. Actually, going here isn't a bad idea as long as you don't confront the Russians. Because we've got a problem with Turkey, obviously. You know, it was, it was always an Islamic state. You know, we've got a lot of problems with that. And I'm not going to go into the details. Hopefully you're aware of it. I think you are. And, and, and taking care of this thing in Syria will slow down the refugees, first of all. It will also cut off some of the different sects in there that are vying for power. I understand all that. You can intervention right into that, intervene right into that. But to confront Russia directly, that's ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous. And you, sh you should, despite all the things that are going on in the United States, to try to put you in, in a bad light on this, go ahead and make this deal with the Russians and make it work. Go after ISIS. They are. Look what, the, look what they did in Sweden. Look what they did in Nice. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Nah, you got to do this right. You got to do it right. I'm still not happy, and I don't think a lot of us are. We need to see that you're going to abide by the, the, the rules of the Republic and your promises. And you're running out of time, President Trump. You're behind the learning curve. It's pretty obvious. I don't care what you have up your sleeve. This move in Syria was a big mistake on a lot of fronts. Not here to